say Islam is peace. The seven billion human beings on this earth, every single one of them has rights. Think. Islam, Islam is the answer. 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 For terrorists. For terrorists. For terrorists. Salaam alaikum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. Wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'ina ashadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wa atu la shrika la wa ashadu wa muhammadin abduhu rasul ma ba'd. First of all, I want to extend the salams, the greetings of peace to all of my brothers and sisters here in Bangalore, India. From, from our country, uh, we have many Muslims, I don't know if you know this, in the United States of America. In fact, many of them came from right here in India. And all of them want to be sure that I give big salams to everybody. So, inshallah, I'll do that right now. Salaam alaikum rahmatullah. The second thing is that I turned out to be a real Muslim after all. And how is that? Because I noticed the difference in timing. In my country, everybody's real punctual, punctual. They got a big thing about being on time. And you know what? I must be a Muslim because I was late tonight. <laughs> we have in our country what we call Eastern Standard Time, EST. Then we have CST, Central Standard Time. MST, Mountain Standard Time. Then we have PST, Pacific Standard Time. And then we got one for the whole country for the Muslims there. It's called AST, Arabic Standard Time, which is about an hour behind everybody else. In any case, the subject tonight really is a very serious one. So I think it's important for us to pay very close attention to this subject. The subject is about Islam versus terrorism. Usually, I see them right on the banners that will say Islam and terrorism, but I want you to be sure you understand versus terrorism. When there's going to be a fight or some kind of a bout, a boxer is going to come to town and they're going to fight it out, they put the name of one and then V.S. and then the name of the other one. This will be, for instance, Folsom versus Shylock. And that means these two are fighting against each other. So this is why I want to say Islam versus terrorism, because certainly one fights the other. In our country, there is a very big misconception about Islam versus terrorism. I'm sure that there's a certain amount of that all over the world because of the tremendous hype that is being received everywhere through the media. And so the first thing to do is talk about the media. Media is a way of communicating ideas and information. And it's a very important thing for all of us. This is something that's been going on since human beings knew how to speak, is for people to go into places and share information from other places. This is not new at all. As a matter of fact, that's how Islam spread, exactly through media, versus the sword, meaning Islam didn't spread by a sword. It spread by media. Media or stories is called hadith. All right. In Islam, we have a science of media or hadith, and it helps us to determine whether or not the information being presented to us is accurate. For instance, if someone says to me that Abdullah said to Abdurrahman, and he said to Aisha, and she said to Sheikh Jafar, and Sheikh Jafar said to me, the only person you're looking at is me. How do you know I'm telling the truth? Well, wait a minute, hold on. Sheikh Jaffer's sitting right there, and you saw him just say something to me a minute ago, so maybe it could be possible. 
The other people are not here. The only way we'd be able to check that out now is to ask him, what is the veracity of Aisha, the one who told it to him? Do you know Aisha? And if he said, well, not really, then how valuable would that information be? Likewise, if we ask Aisha if she's here, we said to her, what about Abdurrahman and Abdullah? And if she says, I don't know who they are, or I just met them yesterday, then what is the value of this hadith or media? Pretty much nothing. Okay? But for sure, you want to check out the one who's talking to you. And if you find that this man is given to prevarication, meaning he lies, then what's the value of anything he says? All right? So this is how we should be today, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter 49 of the Qur'an, Allah is very clear on this subject. He warns us, it's in uh, 49 verse 6, O you who believe, Ya Yuladina Amanu, if a fasik, and this is a disobedient person or liar, comes to you with information or news, then you have to ascertain the veracity or attest to it to find out if it's real. Unless you find yourself harming people in ignorance and afterwards you will regret what you have done. Now I want you to think, the next time somebody tells you something, who are they? Who is the one speaking to you? If it's in a newspaper, who is the journalist? If it's on television, who are these people? And then, who are their sponsors? Who are the ones having them say these words? Are they saying all of the truth or just what fits in a five-minute segment? Are they prejudiced? In my country, we have some people that are prejudiced. Meaning, they like themselves so much, the group they don't like, they will lie on them. Even if it's not true, they say it anyway because, oh well, they're African American, so we'll say this about them. So, I don't know, do you have prejudice here in India? Does people ever do that? Ah, oh, okay. So the first thing to do is realize if you know for sure they've lied about something else, throw everything they say. If what they say is questionable, or maybe not all of the truth, then at least think about what you're hearing. But for sure, if you know something to be the opposite, if they tell you it's light outside right now, what do you consider that? Are you going to consider the obvious, or are you going to try to say, well, maybe they meant, you know, it's almost light, or maybe they meant there's lights over there somewhere, or, you know, let's be realistic. Tell it like it is, okay? That's the first part. The next part deals with what some people do. Some people do bad things in the United States of America. But does that make everybody in the United States of America a bad person? Some people do bad things right here in Bangalore, India. But does that mean everybody here is bad? And often, just as when I was in Pakistan, the residents will speak harshly about themselves without realizing it. And say things like, Everybody here in my country is corrupt. There's nothing but corruption. There's no honest people. And you say, really? Are you sure? Yes, there's no honest people. That's right. They're all liars, right? Well, for sure, the only one I know about is you, and you just said you were a liar. Therefore, everybody must be honest except you. But we don't think of it that way. We don't realize we're including ourselves, our mothers. Are you going to let somebody call your mother a liar? You just did. 
when you said everybody in my country is a liar. And it's not true, is it? But there are some bad people in every single city on this earth, but it doesn't make all the earth bad. Likewise, there are some people who call themselves Muslim and they do some bad things, but that has nothing to do with Islam. So now let's find out right now and right here exactly 